All right, hello and welcome back to Barandar Streams. Today, we're going to go over a little bit more of the game Abandoned Ship by Fireblade Software. And we're going to go over a bit of a combat tutorial. Uh, we're reading a lot of discussions on the uh, on the forums, on the site and whatnot, and uh, uh, some of the reviews. Some people have had some issues with the combat um, and some of the other ship setups. Uh, but we're going to take a look at that because uh, we find the combat fairly simple. Uh, it depends on your tactics. So the starting ship that you have would be this brig here. Uh, fairly stable, 6,000 hull uh, with six crew on it, which you should get six crew as soon as humanly possible. Um, I do not prefer going with prisoners because they can't gain experience they do have negative uh traits that they start with and they are cheap as hell but haven't lost a crew member yet really knock on wood uh, i've only had one guy with an injury and that was from an event so for the most part uh you could feel safe about buying your crew from uh the regular uh areas uh like the tavern here uh, where you can get a, a standard crew. As far as your crew complement goes, uh, while the doctor is useful because he can heal, uh, I haven't needed one yet. Uh, my crew, I usually run with two gunners, two marines, and then the captain and my navigator, uh, and one sailor, uh, who also handles my um, mortar. Um, your navigator... Although not essential to the boat, as your captain could cover it, does have the evasive maneuver skill, um, which is very good to get. Uh, the higher level it gets, it increases, uh, it, it'll decrease the accuracy of your opponent shooting at you. Uh, on your ship with a good navigator. So uh, I do still recommend having a navigator in the ship. Uh, your Marines you need for the melee combats and your cannon reload speed guys are just, you know, essential. As you can see, this guy's already maxed out from just blasting things. Um, but I have only just gone up to the next ship level. Uh, I decided to skip a few since the money kept growing. Um, I was looking at going to a frigate next from the brig and skipping the sloop as the price is not that bad. Uh, but after a few missions and not paying attention, I wound up with enough to get myself a corvette. And I wasn't that far off from the galleon, uh, which is not here because I have it. But uh, the galleon was about a thousand. Uh, and if you can get yourself a port where you get a discount like I did, get a 10% discount it only costs 900 for the ship plus you do get a refund from your previous ship and any items that you leave on it so overall my ship isn't that much different from the starting ship uh, as far as complement goes I think I've added one cannon on to each side here otherwise I'm running with the same complement I had on my old ship uh, and I do have my one extra mortar, which I really haven't messed with yet, uh, as I use this one primarily, the Ship Smasher, which is absolutely brilliant. That has changed the tide of battle for me with that, as it triggers a brace for impact test on the crew when it hits. Plus, it cracks a hole in it. Um, and if you place it right on crews that are doing repairs, you have an excellent chance to blow them off the deck, which uh, is my new favorite thing now, blowing other crew members off the decks of their ships. Uh, and if you can wipe out all the crew members on the ship, you get a little bit more money at the end of combat too. Uh, although it's not easy to do, I don't necessarily go after it. It is a viable tactic. Um, other things you want to consider for combat is your weapons layout uh, and where you want to be fighting if you want to be fighting at close, medium, uh, long, or extra long range. My ship is set for the third one down, so if it's like close, medium, long, and extra long, then I would be at long range. Uh, so I don't have really any close 
range weapons per se, like a strictly close. Um, if I get that close, which I have, uh, it makes things a little more interesting and you really have to focus on what you're shooting at uh, more so than otherwise. But I still have a grape shot uh, and I have a tackler over here that I can use uh, plus my standard chain shots to rip the sails apart. But uh, so you do want to have some kind of a melee weapon at least, something that will do damage. Um, the lightning gun is good because it incapacitates for a little bit. The uh, dart gun would be even better if you find one, which causes Berserk and the other crew members that will have them attack each other. Um, so that's always a good one. The web gun actually lasts for a very long time. Um, and that is good for isolating crew members on the other ship. But in the long run, really blowing holes in a ship is more effective than isolating crew members. Uh, and wasting one of your guys firing that when they could be doubling or tripling up on cannons and firing them that much faster. So it depends on how you want to play. This ship is not built as a uh, boarding ship um, so I don't have uh, spikes on it and whatnot. Uh, eventually I will go to that but I'm going to wait until I have a bigger ship somewhere around a uh, probably a warship. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go with Corvette or Cruiser. Uh, I mean the uh, Cruiser next. I already passed the Corvette so I don't know if I'm going to go with the Cruiser next or just go right to the warship or be just greedy and go right to the Man of War. Who knows but um for now, we are on the Galleon. And uh, let me get back to weapons here. All right, so weapon setup, you want to get your primary cannons on the side that you're mostly going to be fighting on up as quickly as possible. And then work on your opposite side cannons for those instances when you get hit from the wrong side. But always do your prime facing first, okay? The section damager is a highly recommended weapon. As the quicker you knock out a section, they will not be able to use the weapon associated in that section. Okay, and if there's something that scares the hell out of you on the other side, you want to take that out as fast as possible. All right, on this side, I still have the regular round shots, but I have the section of the ship upgraded for speed. So this increases the reload, reload rate. Plus, I have a cannoneer on each one with reload speed increase. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I did, as you can see, I did the performance upgrades on all these areas, which will increase all the reload speeds and the effectiveness of my maneuvers uh, from my sails and him, and from my reload speeds and uh, my healing. Uh, next, I'll do the opposite side, but I don't get hit from that side all that much. I mean, it happens occasionally, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Deck reinforcements are good for taking less damage, but quicker you knock out your opponent, less damage you're taking. So I prefer guns over the reinforcements, uh, performance over reinforcement first. Um, fire resistance is okay, but I haven't hit too much fire yet. I'm sure at some point it might be more important, but early game, more performance, deck reinforcement. Hull crack is pretty decent but you can patch a hole fairly sp fairly quickly repair speed would be better so performance and then either repair speed and deck reinforcement and then go to your crack resistances and fire resistances last uh, once you have your primary uh, siding upgraded then you do your whichever weapon you need unless you need your maneuvers to get away uh, if you want to get the back end of it as far as Upgrades on the ship go, you must have an auto winch. Um, micromanagement in combat is not overwhelming, so you do have time to get somebody back here to pull somebody up who gets blown off the ship, but I can't stress enough how important that automatic winch is because it will automatically pull somebody up without you having to pull somebody off, and then you don't have to worry about it. Just got to remember to go back and move the guy into whatever, whatever position you want him in after that's done. Um, anything else, uh, the advanced crow's nest is also important if you're going to be fighting at a longer range. The further away, you won't be able to identify things on board the ship as to where the crew is and what weapons they have. So as soon as you can get the advanced crow's nest, do so. 
but the first thing you buy is the diving bell because that gives you sunken shipwreck events that you can access on the map uh, so that's critical and you automatically start water pumps and you need those as well from there it's all I mean whatever else you there is an ice plow uh, but I haven't got to the area where I can get it yet so I will upgrade that um, lifeboats important you'll want that at some point but I'm trying not to need it at this moment because I need to put my points in elsewhere so don't get sunk basically and then um, whatever these other upgrades you get over time uh, fortunately whatever upgrades you buy you can carry over to the next ship uh, as well as your weapons as well and you get a discount for whatever's left over and the basic ship itself so don't be afraid about buying and upgrading just do it and then move your stuff over but weapons first once your ship is armed and it has a full side then go to your section upgrades work your performance and then either repair or deck reinforcement and then onto your resistances from there always have a full crew all right and that pretty much sets you up for combat so let's head out and see if we can find something to shoot the area that i'm in right now is jagged rocks so it's not the best of areas and you do get locked into a channel and uh, you have to fight from that area so i pretty much hope that i don't get a close combat because my ship is not really built for that uh, but we'll see what happens this is a pirate over here just waiting for me to kick his butt so we're gonna go and see what we can do show no quarter so as long as i'm not right next to him and i'm right next to him however it's still pretty good all right for you you want to be sitting on your pause button your space bar as much as possible in this uh, during regular combats I start with two guys already attached to guns so they start their recharge automatically I leave two guys off just in case we get hit from the other side because then your guys are gonna have to unmount guns and run to the other side of the ship and I at least have two guys that'll get there quick I have a guy working on the border as this ship smasher is critical for what I do my captain in turn will mount the uh, chain shot to work on their sails and the midsection of the ship damaging uh, and then I will double up these guys on the cannons for reload speed time and that's pretty much where I sit at I don't worry about the center of my ship especially on the galleon um, there's nothing critical there unless you need to maneuver back and forth during a fight uh, if you're trying to get away or get out of outrange certain weaponry um, then it becomes critical for you to, uh, to to be able to keep your sails rolling but in most combats at medium and long range I don't even really worry too much about the center of the ship I just let it get knocked down red and just keep focusing on the outer skirts of the ship unless there's a whole crack or something I'm going to worry about um, in retrospect, since I am locked into a channel, they can't maneuver, and we are at close range. I'm going to switch my captain to my grape shot so I can start hitting these guys. All right, next thing you want to do is take a look at their crew complement and make sure there's no cracking people there because they will jump ship and swim over and attack your crew. So since there's none there, they basically have a cannoneer, a medic, a captain, uh, a ship right, and then uh, a marine and a navigator. Uh, so the navigator I pretty much count useless at the moment and then next thing you want to do is look at the ship section up here on the top right you need to assess what weapons they have and what's the worst thing they're gonna be hitting you with here all right so we got a sure shot doesn't really bother me too much standard weaponry hull cracker that's an issue In the center of the ship they have nothing on the four they have a lightning gun and a sniper that is a very big threat and on the aft they also have a sniper gun so if he pulls off but it looks like the sniper guns on the opposite side of the ship and the lightning gun on the opposite side they won't be able to wheel those around you do have to remember water can be fired from the opposite side of the ship but not one of these uh, side guns they have to be uh, their their face mountings all right so this guy here with the sniper becomes and the uh, sure shot here become the most critical threats on the board so I mean the, uh, the hull cracker so first thing I'm gonna do is try to wipe out this hull cracker as quickly as possible and then while we're keeping that thing pinned down 
we're going to start working on this uh, this guy over here. Right, everybody seems to be set, and we're going to start rolling. I don't put my mortar grape shots on all the fire because uh, I like to aim those. And as you can see, one volley's gone through from my cannons, and I've already knocked out that whole cracker. Okay, so now my section damage, that's why this thing is so critical. The section damager will keep that pin down. And now that I've done damage, their crew members will start focusing on repairs more than attacking back at me. Okay, so that's why I'm not worried so much about ship damage in the ship to ships. And now this guy, until we can get some fire on him, we're going to be hitting him with the mortar next. All right, once the mortar has fold, now I'm taking a look at where I want to drop this. I could drop this here or here, where I can get two guys at once. This will cause brace for impact, and these guys will have to make a brace, and there's a good chance I can knock them off the ship. However, I'm more worried about this sniper because he can do a lot of damage, and I'm going to see if I can pop him or make him pull off his gun and do a repair job while I'm hitting him with the grape shot, and then I can focus my damage on that area of the ship and try to waste him. All right, so they are repairing the section at a fairly good rate, so I want to keep the section damage on there for now. And I'm going to take one more volley with the round shots before I worry about it. Let's see how our plan works. See how I blew him down and put a hole in the ship? He's going to have to deal with that. So now that I have my grape shot ready to go, we're going to find a nice cluster of people who got knocked on their butts. Let's see how many I can shoot in one shot. Does significant damage, but you got to be careful because he can hit you back with that sniper shot. Keep the pressure on that sniper. Now I'm going to start focusing my cannons on this guy as well to try to war. Try to war. Oh, he got knocked over and knocked down. Captain's back and back on the guns. Collateral damage is Casey. Now he's busy over here working on his uh, his little hole and not firing that sniper gun at me. So that's a key element to combat. As you can see, I've barely taken damage right now against these guys. All I've had is them running around, fixing holes in their ship, uh, and keeping them suppressed on their main areas. So he still has no guns, and now I'm starting to damage this sniper shot. Now he's got two holes in his ship, and he's about to have a third. So, got some tension up here, but it pulls their repair jobs off of this. So now as you can see, you have one guy sitting in the back doing nothing, one guy doing nothing, two guys trying to repair the guns, and these guys running around trying to repair holes in the ships. And I've come, and I've already blown one guy off the deck, and he's dead because they have no winch in the back to pull up their crew members. So this fight is completely under control right now. You have no fear. You can just sit here and basically do whatever you want. You can snipe people, Blow them off the decks, whatever you like to do. They're at your mercy at this point. And the more guys they send up here to repair, the more holes I'm going to blow in the ship. Until I knock people off the decks. Which, like I said, is my new favorite thing. And occasionally you could throw one in the back, keep your back crew busy, try to knock that navigator off the ship, things like that. The more guys they send up, just keep sniping them with your grip. Keep the pressure on the guns that you want down. In the case of mortars, when you come up against mortar boats, that's another thing. I don't worry too much about acid mortars, uh, they're annoying. But you'll just have to watch where the shot is going to land and move your crew out of the way for a few seconds and then come back. They don't really hurt anything else. Uh, fire damage nearest guy, put the fire out, doesn't take too long to do. Uh, plus when you increase your fire resistance in mining, I'm not even like 
hull cracks get on as quickly as possible. Uh, but otherwise, it's really the time the bombs that you got to worry about. So you get somebody, usually what I'll do is if I see a time bomb, if I haven't taken it out early or I can't get it, I'll assign one crew to just run around and do that type of job, like my captain or whatever, uh, since he's usually wrecking sails or sniping with the grape shot, nothing else. Let's see if I could do it some damage shit. It's too clown. Taking the repair and you're gone. Oh, goodbye! Blew him right off the deck of the ship. Another fatality. Another fatality. No help for you. But I'll try to send you a buddy if I can. If I can blow somebody else. Ooh, oh, almost blew him. He made a save. Later you're gonna fail your roll there, pal. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> that is great. Oh, this is great. Snipe this guy. Yeah, and at this point I'm having more fun shooting people off the deck. Here we go, I got another contestant. Step right up, get a nice contestant. Can you hold on? Oh, almost dead over here. If I can get a grape shot, I might have a chance to kill everybody. Grape shot. Oh, and he's dead. Oh, and he's dead. Blown off the ship. Okay. <laughs> At this point, the only guy left is the captain. Everybody else is blown off the deck of the ship. So, I'm going to take my guns offline. And we're going to see if we can put this captain Jones locker as well. He's gonna sit and steer and we'll just keep pummeling him. Hit him with great shots. Let's see if we can kill him. Eventually he'll have to run to the front of the ship because he's gonna sink otherwise. before I get a blow off, but either way. Get him, we'll get hurt. Alright, he's in a good spot here. Let's see if we get another one. And then Captain, and there you go. And that's how to kill the crude ship. Completely wiped out. 44, I get a little more, I get like 20 more money in that hand than you normally would for a game. That's it. As you can see, barely any damage. My crew members are sparkling. Everything is shiny. Uh, so it's definitely important to focus on the guns that you want to take out. Um, you could take out different crew members of the ship if you're precise enough with your shots, but... I do recommend getting that whole cracker, the ship smash, or whatever that thing is. That's, uh, let me get to the docks here so I don't get the wrong recommendation. The ship smasher. This is just a priceless uh, item that will give you hours and hours of fun. And when you combine it with your timed mortar, you could blow a hole in the ship and then put a time bomb next to it <laughs> to increase the pressure and then uh, snipe them down. But yeah, overall, great fun. Um, and that's it for our little tutorial here. I hope you enjoyed it.